everybody, and welcome to episode 581 of Good Luck High Five. What? That's right. You're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering, whether you're tired or not. Yes, I'm one of your hosts, Maria. And I'm one of your hosts, Megan. And happy daylight savings time to all who celebrate. I am not handling it well. It is. It's pretty brutal on you, you know? It's it just rough, is. man. It just is. Give me the hour back. Did you know it's not actually daylight savings time? It's daylight saving time, singular? <laughs> does that make you, Does that? how does that make you feel? Furious. <laughs> Absolutely furious. I'm really sorry that I know, I happen I get to know it. that. I get why, but it's not making yeah. me less mad. Yeah. Yeah. I, we, when I worked for the news, we had to write it all the time. And like, that's when I learned that you must not under any circumstance, write Daylight savings time. It's daylight saving time. Ugh. And ever since then, I just could not handle it. Like I just do couldn't you, handle it. Do you want to hear another dumb rule? Yeah. Did you know, like, if you're talking about, like, oh, we were talking to each other. Yeah. Um, If it's two people, the correct way is one another. And if it's more than two people, it's each other. So, so if you were talking one to someone. person, it's one another. Be like, oh, yeah. Like, you know, like, oh, Maria and I were talking to one another. Yeah. And then if we were talking to, if it was more than two people, then it's each other. I suppose that makes sense. It does make sense. Just like, like daylight saving time, but rules are <laughs> stupid. <laughs> there you go. The end of my uh, sentence. Language rules were meant to be broken. Rules are for nerds. Uh, and you don't want to be a nerd, Wait. Do you? <laughs> What's the show about again? I don't know. <laughs> Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Everybody, today uh, we're going to talk about um, the, the Fallout Precon Commander decks yeah. um, that we had the great honor to play with in a brand new episode of Com Commander Arcade. It's very fun. We're going to talk to you about that and in doing so, talk to you a little bit about our, give you an update on our journey in Commander Yes. Uh, and what we've kind of been coming across as baby Commander players. Then we're all going to take a brief nap. <laughs> We're just going to build that into the show. Do I have it in the show? Yeah, that makes sense. I think it'll be nice for everyone. Yeah, I think at home too, wherever you're listening, you can pause the program at that moment and exactly. take your own nap. Just take your own nap. And if anyone gets mad at you, your boss, your children, whatever, just be like, look, Marie and Megan said that this was the exactly. nap time of the podcast. Also, who's getting mad at you? It's built you in. You need to check in <laughs> with them and be like, listen, that's... Naps is, are a right. It is the year of our dinosaur overlord 2024. Indeed. And who is getting mad at whom? Zatulpa. That's the ruler. Yeah, exactly. Of all. Did Don't you, you not know? Do you think Zatulpa would be the dinosaur uh, overlord? What? I think that she is. Like canonically? Zatulpa. Uh, wait, no. Lore. Who am I thinking of? I don't no, know. I am thinking of Zatulpa. Zatulpa. I mean, because Zatul she's a primal conqueror, <laughs> that means she conquered first that, or that it's her mm, primal instinct. Look, she has flying, double strike, vigilance, trample and indestructible. I think it's the indestructible that's really doing it for me, making me think like she is the number one uh, over all the dinosaurs that we've seen in magic. Who are the, who's the other one I'm thinking of, though? Um, I don't know. Yeah, you do. <laughs> well, let's do a search. Let me tell you, Maria. Dinosaur. You know. Creature you type. You know which one I'm thinking dinosaur. of. Dinosaur. I want, if you're listening, I want you to hold one dinosaur in your head right now. And which one you're thinking of? Which one you're, and you're going to know which one okay, I'm thinking Okay, I'm going to guess which one you're thinking of. Hold okay. on, I need to make these rare. This, there's too many yeah, dinosaurs yeah, there are too in magic dinosaurs. right now. Uh, are we, are we rare talking, or mythic? Rare or mythic. I think okay. it's like going to be one or the other. It's definitely one or the other. All right, rare, mythic, rare, search. Um, okay, I don't think it's any of these. Um, Carney T at a time was kind of the... Ugh. But I don't, I don't. Galta is another one that would I would no. put up there as maybe that's the one you're thinking of. I think you're thinking of Gishoth. That's who I think you're thinking of. Oh no, I'm not thinking of Gishoth. That's really? A good, I think that's a good one though. That's like a really good oh. guess. Oh well, geez, I don't know who you're thinking of then. Oh man, keep going. Okay, there is a Regisaur Alpha. That's I mean that's like Regisaur. That's like exactly. a ru ruler. Exactly, and Alpha is the first number one. one. Um. Uh, uh, oh, where is who I'm thinking of? Is it a oh, there we go. Oh yeah, Zakama. It's Zakama. Yeah, I'm obviously thinking of Zakama. Yeah, it was either that or Zakama. Um Primal Calamity. I guess that doesn't sound as like as I am in charge as I thought. I mean, I just gotta say, for some reason, indestructible to me says you are the leader. Okay. Are there any other indestructible sure. dinos? I don't know. I'm about to find out. I'm too tired to know anything for sure. <laughs> I'm just tired. I understand. Yeah. Industri How do you spell indis? Indis. I don't know. Des I'm too tired. Indestruct. Uh, in yeah. des tra, but without the K. T table. 
<gasps> oh, look at this. There's oh, a few. Uh, yeah. Atali okay. Indominus Atali Rex. Does seem Ooh, Indominus Rex. Yeah. Is probably pretty high up there. Um yeah, but you got to discard the cards with it to give it indestructible. You know okay. what I mean? Wow, you're. I think that you decided that it was <laughs> that it was whomever that yeah, was. It's Zitalpa. a Zitalpa. Um, if and you then you're just have gonna a make it, vote. and then you're just gonna make it true. <laughs> if you have a different vote for who you think should be the ultimate dinosaur overlord, please let us know. Yes. You can put in the Discord um, or on uh, Twitter but with the hashtag Dino Overlord and let us know who you think yeah. should be. Anyway, we've really... Point is, it is the year of our dinosaur overlord, 2024. Who's getting mad at you? Don't let them do that. Take a nap. Yeah. I Just today, I was thinking about making business cards. And? Business cards on them that say... All it says on the business card is, you have just given me unsolicited advice. If you collect 10 of these cards, you owe me $100. And that's it. Yeah, but are you are you really going to do it? Yes. Uh, there are, let me tell you, that there are people that I know that have driven me to want to make it. Oh, my God. Um, you could probably sell those, honestly, in this state, in the year of our and Zatulpa, just, 2024. The year, yes, the year of our Zatulpa, 2024. <laughs> I just like, and I feel like, one, I might someday get $100 out of it. You might. I might get $100, but two, just don't give me advice I didn't ask for. <laughs> I know, look, other different people feel differently about this, but let me tell you that if you are a femme person and and you have been around, you understand yeah, you what have, I'm talking have about. You been around? Have you have you simply <laughs> existed? You have received so much unsolicited advice and let me tell you, like my little meter is full. <laughs> my gas tank is full up and there's the dance just don't card get, is yes, occupied. It's, it's all it's all signed in. <laughs> Anyways, oh, let's talk about magic fabulous. the gathering. Anyway, let's give you some unsolicited advice. Uh we yeah, take a nap. That's our unsolicited advice. Um oh. Uh, we owe you ten dollars. Wait, uh, does no, it is it to, cumulative? It's, <laughs> it's like if you collect if if I at any point have given you ten. So the cards, first nine are free. The is first what you're nine telling are free. Me. Oh, okay. The first nine hmm, instances of solic unsolicited advice are free, which I think is exceptionally generous. <laughs> But if you get a tenth one, you have That's to it. give me a hundred dollars. Hundred bucks. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk not only about the follow decks and commander and all that kind of stuff. We've got some news to share with you today about the ban and restricted announcement that came out yeah. earlier this week. Um, some spicy shakeups to modern there in that banning. Yep, that we'll, we'll get into. And then you know we'll talk about. Yes. <laughs> I was taking a brief nap. <laughs> Uh -huh. My brain was snoozing. Uh, we'll talk more about naps, probably. We'll probably talk more about naps. Wow, this what this year has simply been a rough. You know, this was this has been a rough daylight saving. Oh, I thought you were gonna be like 2024. It's been a rough one, and I'm like, it's only March. No, I'm okay with 2024. Hot okay, take. okay. So far, I'm fine about it's it. So far, fine year. Yeah. Uh, all right. Maria. Yes. We have some people to thank before we start this we show. We do. We have some people to thank. And first and foremost amongst them are, of course, you, the listeners, and especially the patrons of this show. Thank you so much for making everything that we do possible. You can become a patron. It's so easy. It takes less than a minute over on patreon.com slash GLHF magic. We have a bunch of tiers for you to choose from. You get a bunch of awesome stuff. Discord access, early access to episodes. Everything drops a day early for patrons. That includes our new Commander Arcade episodes. You get to influence our Commander Arcade episodes. Uh, you get chances to win cool stuff from our Commander Arcade episodes. You get yeah. longer episodes if you're Ooh. a producer which I love doing those and they're so fun you get like honestly the bonus content is almost like I should do the math of it because of the, they're pretty long the extra yeah. episodes so like consider that if you want more content it's a lot of stuff it's a lot of stuff uh, thank you especially to new patrons one we said thank you to Tamsin oh, at Tamsin. the end of last episode who accomplished the witch like feat of becoming a patron while we were recording it's so be such a beautiful gift from you yeah. to us Tamsin thank you Tamsin, damn, Sin, are you a are you a witch? Are you a witch? <laughs> because he, you accomplish a spooky task. Tamsin's already in our Discord and yes. uh, just living it up over there because yep. they're like, yeah, I got in under the wire. I did. I accomplished what no patron has yet accomplished. Has yet accomplished. Congratulations, wow. Tamsin. Thank you as well to Michael. Michael. 
Oh man, I feel like I've already done bi a bicycle themed. Michael pun? I Have I? M Michael, have you bicycled? <laughs> Like, we'd ride on a double bicycle with you. What are those called? Tandem bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, Michael, we really like them all you. But oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a nice one. Everyone that whose makes name more is more sense. than one syllable. Let me just say yours is going to be weird. It's going to be good. That's just how it is. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for a pun. $5 a month or more. We'd love to see you. Uh, thank you so very much, everybody. It helps us more than you'd imagine. Patreon.com slash GLHF magic. Um, speaking of Patreon, I want to shout out our new episode of Commander Arcade, which just dropped. Yes. Because your Patreon supports not only Good Luck High Five, but also every single episode of Commander Arcade that we make. Very true. And this uh, month, we've got two for you. Spoiler alert. Uh, the first Ooh. one coming out here is us playing the new Fallout Commander Precon decks. Yeah. We dress up in really cute costumes. They're great costumes. So you must witness it if for that alone. Maria's costume. <laughs> Well, it's a very bizarre experience. I was like, I'm playing the Mothman deck, and I um, didn't know really what a Mothman would wear, or that a Mothman costume would be something that you could purchase. Um, but sure enough, yeah, you it, certainly can. It's right there, yes. and that's what I wore. The internet, <laughs> you can buy it. Full of <laughs> 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 That's the for the internet. It, did you think of it? You can buy you it. Can the buy internet. It. We're still looking to get our watch hours up over there, everybody. So if you can, just put it on in the background, let it run. You don't even have to listen to it. But I, uh, but I you should you watch should, it. It's, it's so very, cute. It's a super cute it's episode, great. everybody. We have a great time. And by the way, the decks are great. We'll get into more of that later. But I just yeah. want to throw that out there. So everybody, go and check it out. YouTube.com slash at GLHF Commander. Now we have to say thank you to Card Kingdom, yeah. everybody. Um, you can check them out on the internet at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Speaking of those follow decks that are available right now over there, I think they really did a fantastic job with them. Yeah. They they seemed balanced to me. They seemed very, very fun in yes. di different kinds of ways. Yeah. Uh, you played Auras, which... I'm so sorry. I but was very jealous about. I will say that we picked... <laughs> Like maybe this isn't the smartest thing to have ever done in our lives, but we picked the decks that we were going to play from the Fallout precons based on what costume we wanted yes, to wear. Yes, and you know what? I think that's fine because I agree. we just tried something yes. different. But at the end of the day, you were definitely playing the deck that's way my vibe. Yeah, it and was. I was super playing the fun deck, deck that was very your vibe. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so yeah. Anyways, you know, you can find them out on uh, Car Kingdom, um, and get whatever you want. Get your hot little hands on anything your hot you might little want. Hands. I found one of my battle decks. By the way, I was cleaning out my house. Oh yeah, and I found my green battle deck. Um, and I was just, it just uh gave me a little warm feeling in my heart. Oh. If you want to teach anybody in your life magic, the best way to do it was a, was an easy mono color deck. And Card Kingdom builds those and sells those for like ten bucks. Yeah. So you should check them out if that's uh, your jam. Card Kingdom. Like the internet, you can buy it. <laughs> You're welcome, Card Kingdom. <laughs> Uh, all right, Maria, it's time for a randomizer. Yes, we've had to scribe, head to describefall.com and click to the random card button, and we must guess what the card does based on the art alone. Uh, Megan, you want to go first or second? Here, I'll show you this one first. Okay. Ooh, Ooh, this art's going hard. This art is, I like this art. It's pretty sick. Yeah, this is uh, ultimate high fantasy art that I'm looking at right here. There is a knight in the foreground with not only one sword in one hand, but two swords, one in each hand, cape flowing in the wind, wearing yes. full silver armor and a golden crown. They look to be in a city doing battle. They're facing off against a demon. Yeah. Full horns, large wings, red eyes and mouth, flames inside his tum tum, big grippy grap grappy arms. This is a stand up. Grippy grappy. <laughs> you know that whole, you know that one poem about the Jabberwock? <laughs> yeah. His grippy grappy his arms. Grippy, grippy arms. <laughs> Uh, and this is, yeah, I don't know who's going to win. Who would win <laughs> this knight or this demon boy? Who would win? Two swords or some grippy grappy arms? <laughs> I'm going with the grippy grappy arms every time. I got to tell you, uh, this is a white card. This is called final stance. This is a flash enchantment that gives plus two, plus two at first strike indestructible. Wow. All right. It's an aura or whatever, you know? Well, you're pretty wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say it is an enchantment. Oh, so that's something. This right. is Guild Feud. Oh, 
I knew it was Ravnica. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's on Ravnica. It's five and a red and encha- for an enchantment. So it's a red enchantment. Okay. At the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent reveals the top three cards of their library, may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield, then puts the rest into their graveyard. You do the same with the top three cards of your library. If two creatures are put onto the battlefield this way, those creatures fight each other. What? That's a pretty, that's an elaborate thing set of things to this say. This must be a rare. Uh, yeah, it's a Return to Ravnica rare. Weird. I know, right? No memory of this card. Me neither. I mean, it was early in our days. Exactly. But what a weird looking card. Very bizarre. Huh. Okay, what a strange... I like the fact that they put them out in a fight. I like yeah, I like right? random stuff like that. Anyway, That's kind of cool. Um, Megan, your card, yeah. I want you to take a look at this art. Get ready. Okay. Oh! there. We are looking at... It's like a quiet... Um, like what's the word that I'm looking for? It's like the serene. It's, it's very serene, but it's also like it's not the ocean, and it's not a lake. It's like one of those like little. It's like a little coastal by by. Yes, it's a cove. It looks kind of like a cove. There's water. There's like some lovely rocks, and then there's like a spear resting on a rock in the foreground. Lovely. It really feels feels like this is supposed to be about this spear. Absolutely. It is. This painting is about this spear. Spear forward. Uh, I'd yes. say. Poking out of the water, waiting for someone to come and get it. I'm going to say, wow, I feel like I'm supposed to say that this is an enchantment. Maybe it is. Okay, I'm going to say that this is an enchant. Oh, wait, no, not an enchantment, an artifact, I mean. Oh, like yeah, an equipment. yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this is going to be one and a blue um, for... We'll just call it Spear of the Cove. Oh, nice. Um, it's an artifact. It gives plus two plus O oh, an island walk. <laughs> <laughs> what a great guess. What if I was to tell you this is a white card? What? And what, is- <laughs> what if I was to tell you it was an aura? Whew. All right. Sure. Can you imagine? No. This, this card is called Lance. It is a single white mana for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has first strike. It gives nothing else. It gives nothing else but first strike. That is it. Lance. Lance. And let me tell you, the first printing, everybody, limited edition alpha. Wow. History right here. Very cool. Art by Rob Alexander. Um, I've never seen this card before. Yeah. But it makes sense that it was in such an early uh, edition of Magic. It's very yeah. straightforward. <laughs> I I'm, I guess this might have been good back then if a creature, I, have I mean. no idea. Creatures and every, everything was so bad other than like counterspell and the monsters and all that. Period. <laughs> Lance, give your stupid 2-2 for four mana for a strike. Maybe yep. that was good enough back then. I don't know. Anybody who's uh, ever played with Lance, please let us know. I don't know with the lightning bolt running around. Sounds like a two I mean, for one for me. To me. <laughs> I think this is very cool, and I've never seen this card, so I'm <laughs> happy neither. to see it pop up today. It's very. I cannot believe that that's a white card. Like it's so it's so ocean blue. forward. Yes. <laughs> Lance fo- spear forward, ocean, ocean. forward. <laughs> Uh, let's hit the mailbag. And by mailbag, I mean news bag. Toot toot, the news is here. That's the truck pulling up to your house. What? To throw is the newspaper happening? at your door. How am, I, <laughs> how am I receiving this news? There, it's being, okay, you know, like a newspaper delivery okay. kid on a bike. They're throwing yes. it at your door. But this, in this case, it comes from a truck, but they still throw it at your door. Okay. <laughs> Violently. Okay. Okay. Um, the news today, uh, everybody, was that the, in the BNR announcements, been restricted, uh, in modern, the biggest change, uh, no changes in standard, no changes in pioneer, no changes in legacy, explorer, or popper. Modern violent outburst is banned. Whoa. Huge, Maria. Huge, huge deal. Blah, 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 blah. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, t- goodbye. I mean, not goodbye, but take that, Teamer Rhinos. Um, and also Living End. And Living End. Living End has yeah. been doing very well, actually. Absolutely. In this most recent cycle of regional championships. Um, in addition to, obviously, Teamer Rhinos, yes. But... I have seen alongside that living and being very successful. And yeah, so it is agree. wild to me that like with one swift blow of the axe, <laughs> you have gotten rid of two decks. All right. So Violent Outburst, uh, if you don't know, this is the card that is one red green for an instant with cascade. And so that's the problem is that it's an instant speed cascade effect. So you just uh, cascade spells off the top of your library and then you hit whatever you what, whatever you want to hit because the deck is built that way. And then creatures get plus one plus oh until end of turn. Um, 
And they say basically like Teamer Rhinos has begun to approach uh, the levels of Rakdos midrange in modern that they had felt were problematic levels. And they wanted to not entirely kill Cascade strategies, but they wanted to kind of put them, give them a little bit of a, a hampering, um, kind of put some weights in their horse bags and uh, buy them up. <laughs> What a reference. I would expect me to make that reference. But anyways, well, moving on. To be fair, it was a reference from Damn Yankees, uh, which is a musical, <laughs> not All actually. All right. Well, never mind. Makes sense again. The world has been righted. <laughs> That's where I got it from. And yeah, I kind of hamper a little bit and say, hey, you can play these uh, cascade effects at sorcery speed, but we don't want you playing it at instant speed when the opponent can't yes. interact with you in a meaningful way. Which is what a violent outburst did. Yeah, because you can just do it on their turn and then, you know. Wow. Win. win. Wild. Yeah, Wild. It, it is shaking up modern too. We've got a modern pro tour coming up later this summer. Um, although in that Amsterdam. will also be after the release of Modern Horizons three, correct? Which I'm sure is just going to do nothing. Do nothing. Yep, that's where the end of my sentence was going. <laughs> no, modern will hopefully look pretty different after Modern Horizons three, or at least give us a couple of new decks. There are so many cards from the last Modern Horizons sets that have been really impactful. That's true. Of course, among them cards that. This then later had to be banned. Yeah. Yeah. Like so. Fury, for instance. Good point. Which was one of those evoke cards. Uh, the only other change here in is in vintage. Po Ponder is unbanned. Oh, is unrestricted. Uh, it was restricted. Yeah. Ponder has been restricted in vintage since 2008, which is a long time for it to have been in a card jail. Um, but <laughs> they think uh, Ponder's ready to come back in. All right. Into the four of club. Well, let's see what happens. Another interesting thing is that there was no changes in uh, Pioneer, um, which I think some people were disappointed about, um, and no changes in Standard because uh, what they said about Standard was actually pretty interesting to me in this new, in this press release, which says, over the past year, the number of players participating in Tabletop Standard has trended upward, culminating this past week with numbers higher than any other week since the pandemic. Oh, that's, I mean, very interesting. There are more than triple the number of individual entries into an event for standard this year when compared to the same period last year. In fact, standard has now returned to being the most played 60 card tabletop format in addition to remaining the most played digital format. So thank you to all the players and stores that explored standard. Wow. Well, that's nice. That's good news. Rumors of my death have been, <laughs> been greatly, greatly exaggerated. 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 People love to talk about how standard um, is dying, but the data seems to refute that here, yeah. at least from Wizards. Uh, there's a bunch of decks in standard to mess around with. The next Pro Tour is standard, I believe. Yes. So um, I'm excited to see where it goes. And this, I, I mean, it makes me feel good because... We've just had a hard time in Magic getting people out to the stores, getting people to play standard, a competitive yeah. environment with l loss of GPs and that kind of thing. So I will say I like picked up. I was like, what should I play in standard just so that I can when I have run out of gems for drafting? Yeah, because my drafting has been going rocky recently. Oh, you know, it's OK. Sometimes it's great. And then sometimes it's not. The end. Uh, anyways, yeah, yeah. that is the story of my of my draft was. Yeah, I get it. But in standard, I was like, what should I play to play? You know, just play a little constructed every once in a while. And I've been playing the slow Gurk, the over slime deck. Yes. And it is so it's so weird and fun. This was the winner of the 75k open at MagicCon Chicago. Oh, I T really enjoy it. Tell me about this slow Gurk deck. What's happening? So okay. With the slimy boy. Yeah, slow Gurk, the over slime. <laughs> Who would win, an over slime or a, a Zatulpa primal? Or Zatulpa. Wow, great question. What's her name? Zat primal Dawn. I've said it a thousand times today, Primal Dawn. Yeah. An over slime or a primal Dawn, who would win? Uh, so Sloger the over slime is <laughs> one green, blue Man, frame, Man, I woke up three. with some over slime on me today, let me tell you. I don't want... <laughs> what is it? No! That is you waking up with some overslime on you out there? That is the worst thing you've ever said on this podcast. <laughs> now that is untrue. <laughs> I think it might be true. <laughs> Once I said that British people had the saying, quote, choke down a goose, and that is not, that was 100% a lie. I don't think that and that's <laughs> worse than what you're saying now. Is it more of a lie? <laughs> yes, because right now you're not making any statements of fact. <laughs> <laughs> is, was it worse though? No, I don't think so. You waking up with that overslime? <laughs> what is that? 
You know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. I refuse to engage with what you're talking about. <laughs> Look, it's daily saving time. There's a lot more opportunity for that over slime to get on you because you're waking up an hour <laughs> I have officially killed Megan. It's happened. Who knew who knew it would be today of all days? <laughs> There she goes. Can't see her anymore. She's off the show. <laughs> there she is down there. <laughs> she can't get up. She's on daylight saving time. <laughs> She's stuck on her chair. We can't help her. Recovered in overslide. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I wish I had my phone right now. <laughs> She's on the floor. <laughs> What happened to you? I, I couldn't get up <laughs> off the chair. I like slid down into a, I was like, I can't explain it. I couldn't get uh, back. You were black holed by that chair and sucked you right in. You oh know, my like, God. You know, like the only way out uh, is through. I had arrived at that point was sinking down in the chair. That my only way out of the chair was to con- yeah. completely exit the chair. I, I understand. I thought that I was going to be able to get back up yeah. while remaining on the chair, but I could it was, not. It was, it was impossible, it turns out. Man, that saving time hit you hard. All right, it really did. <laughs> I really did. Anyway, what were we talking about? Slogurk. Slogurk. You put a bunch of lands in your graveyard um, in different ways, oh. including amongst them, a lot of, you can use the lands that are still in standard from, um, what is, okay. <laughs> My brain is not functioning. The ones like um, Ottawara and stuff like that, right? The channel, oh, sure, that's sure. what I'm trying the to say. Lands. The channel lands. Um, so you can do them for effect. You can get lands into your graveyard other way like aftermath analyst and then slow Gurk get real real big uh but then also if he die you get all those lands back into your hand oh. so the legendary lands you can use again oh that's nice um or y- if they try and target slow Gurk, if he has more than three counters on him sure. you can take counters off and put him back in your hand and either way you get lands back from your graveyard so, so you're ba- just kind of really you're just really working the land circuit you know and you're playing a little uh sultai deck here yeah oh that's fun Sultai is not a color combo that you see all the time in standard. You know what I mean? Exactly. Okay. I like Sultai. It's a nice color combination. And are you just winning with a huge Slogurk? Yeah, you get big Slogurk. You have big other creatures too. He has Trample. Okay, yeah. All right, that seems fun. He had Trampley Boy. So, so yeah. standard, pleased to announce, it seems like it's in a good place, at least as far as was the coast is concerned. Yeah. That makes me feel a lot better. Yeah. Um, Get on out there, maybe. Try some standard if you're feeling it. And modern, getting the shake up there with Violent Outburst, um, kind of cooling the format down as far as those reanimator decks are concerned. Yeah. Um, And that seems like a good change to me, too. All right. There's your news update, everybody. Nice work, team. <laughs> Megan got, nothing, got back nothing up from the floor. Nothing eventful <laughs> happened during that news update. <laughs> There's nothing to see here in this nothing news segment. Nothing to see here. It was all pretty chill. <laughs> Let's talk about the Fallout pre-con commander decks, our experience playing them, and kind of our experience uh, now that we're a little bit into commander. We've got our second commander arcade episode out there in the world. Yeah. How are we feeling about the format as newer players? How are we feeling about these commander decks? So Maria, yes, you played the you played the Mothman. Yeah, Mutant Menace. Yes. How did you feel the why? Sorry, the, the wise, wise Mothman. Mothman. Well, yes. I thank you. I shouldn't silly the Mothman's name by <laughs> not including wise. the title Wise ahead of it. It's true. I picked this deck based on the costume that I wanted to wear, and it was great. I was basically encased in a large blanket with ears the entire time it that we shot this. It was really cozy. It was cozy and lovely. Uh, the Wise Mothman is one black, green, blue for a three-three flyer insect mutant. Whenever the Wise Mothman enters the battlefield or attacks, each player gets a rad counter. Whenever one or more non-land cards are milled put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to x target creatures where x is the number of non-land cards milled this way now i'll be the first to admit i miss these rad counters like all the time <laughs> this this is like a very trigger like oh, trigger yes. centric it's a trigger deck. happy deck let me tell you <laughs> absolutely you gotta yes. be on top of the triggers of this deck yes uh and the rad counters do matter a lot because people get yeah. them and then what happens is on their upkeep was that when it was or after their draw I don't remember if it's at like the beginning of their main or win. What, whatever. At the start of their turn. Right, at some point. Yeah. Based on the number of rad counters have, you have to mill that many. And if you hit non-land cards, you remove the rad counters and take a point of damage. And if you hit land cards, well, then they stay. Yeah, exactly. So, so lots of cards are going into the graveyard. Yes. And that 
gets you n- lots of nice not lots of like nice bonuses with your Mothman. Absolutely. The Mothman deck has a lot of different ways to put counters on a lot of different things. The Mothman uses radiation to his advantage. The Mothman will radiate and else and trample a lot of car- big cards with trample putting trample, very important counters on things. Yeah. Um, a card that I also loved was the Mire Alert Queen that I played with. Spoiler alert, but I mean, <laughs> it's a great card uh, that'll give you. How do I spell this? My uh, Meyer Meyer don't lurk. There she is. Um, she'll give you an idea of what's going on in this deck. She's a uh, four and a blue for a four four vigilance crab mutant. Great. Uh, <laughs> when she enters the battlefield, target player gets two rad counters. So once again, this is with your synergy. Whenever one or more non land cards are milled, draw a card, then put a plus one plus one counter on Meyer Alert Queen. This ability triggers only once each turn, but that's probably happening every single every time. Every single player's turn. Player's turn. So it's pretty, this deck seemed really cool. I got to say, I I saw everybody's deck at the table. And even though you were playing the auras deck, which is my jam, I think this Mothman deck is the coolest deck. It, yes, I, I think I agree with you generally. I thought it was great. Although judge Rob was playing the scientist deck. Yes. And that deck did look really cool. If you're someone like you or judge Rob. (laughs) Yes. Well, (laughs) fair enough. A little too much for my, my weak Mothman brain to handle, but yeah. (laughs) How dare you? The Mothman is wise. (laughs) It's in his name. It's in his name. That's true. Um, so science is the deck uh, with Dr. Madison Lee, blue, red, white. Okay, it's Jessica. Obviously, this is my jam. Yeah. Uh, legendary creature, human scientist, two, three. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you get an energy. Pay, tap, pay one energy. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero, oh, and gains trample and haste until end of turn. Boring. Why would you? T- <laughs> why, why would you do that? Why would you attack? Tap. Pay three energy, draw a card. Now we're talking. Yep. And tap, pay five energy, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And so, right, you're just like getting, you're just getting tons of energy. You're doing a lot of different like artifact synergies. This will give you another idea of like what's going on here. Liberty Prime recharge to blue, red, white for an eight, eight robot. Wow. Legendary artifact creature. Vigilance. Trample. Haste. Whenever it attacks or blocks, sacrifice it unless you pay two energy. Two tap, sacrifice an artifact. You get two energy and draw a card. So you get like, it's just like a very, like a great synergistic artifacts energy counters deck. There is a card that Rob played in this deck that I just loved. Oh, I got to talk about it. I know who you're talking about. Red Death, the Shipwrecker. It's a cute it's a cute crab mutant. Gosh, I'm on the crab train today. Uh, blue and red for a 1-3 with alluring eyes. Yes. <laughs> like, can you just imagine wh- what the crab would have to look like for you to be like, oh, man. Oh, that crab's got alluring, alluring eyes. eyes. Like, I am into that crab's I eyes. I cannot imagine myself looking at a crustacean and feeling that way, but. But somehow you did. But, uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, tap, go target creature and opponent controls. That player draws a card, you add red. Goading means that a, the creature must attack on their next turn, and it cannot attack you. Correct. It must attack at another player. Yeah, so <laughs> I d- I, this card uh, was a house for Rob in the game, and it was also it helped protect him from bigger creatures. He just made them attack other people. But to me, this alluring eyes crab is just so funny. Like, why? Eyes. Why is this crab? <laughs> why is it like, why am I so it into also, this crab? It has ba- what if it, what if... It's true allure is that it's not the eyes. It's like it has like big eyelashes. Yes. That's what I was like thinking. Just like, them at you. Shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> like, hello, look at me. Oh, I'm just a crab. I'm just a crab. I'm the perfect evolutionary form. You're like, wow. All right. Yeah, that crab's got alluring eyes. Soon everything will become me. Uh, Megan, do you want to talk about the deck you played? Yes. Dog meat ever loyal. Oh my gosh. So I played the scrappy survivors deck, which is red, green, white. Uh, and like you said, is all about different auras and equipments. Um, and it's about being a cute dog. Mostly it's about being a cute dog. (laughs) And you dressed up as a dog. I did. With a little bandana and ears. So cute. You know. It was it was a really great and time. And you, I mean, to be also fair, you 100% cosplayed as oh, that I dog. was being for that the dog. the entirety of the episode. It was so fun. <laughs> Commit to the bit. Uh, red, green, white for a 3-3 legendary creature dog. 
Dog. When dog meat enters the battlefield, mill five cards, then return an aura or equipment card from your graveyard to your hand. Whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, create a junk token. What's a junk token? It's an artifact with tap, sacrifice this artifact, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn, activate only as a sorcery. Nice. So I did also have a lot of junk tokens you did. in my deck. Yeah. And to give you more of an idea of what this deck is like, there's also Preston Garvey Minuteman, two red, green, white for a 4-4 four, four human soldier. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a green aura enchantment token named Settlement attached to up to one target land you control. It has enchant land and enchanted land has tap, add one mana of any color. Whenever Preston attacks, untap each enchanted permanent you control. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you know, you're we're putting auras on things. The end. The end. Uh, you can make pretty big dogs and pretty big <laughs> other creatures with you this deck. You can make pretty big dogs. This deck has Basilisk Collar in it. Yes. Which gives Death Touch and Life Link. Oh, great. It has all that glitters, of oh, course. Oh, yeah. Which is uh, an, en an enchantment aura that enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. Let me tell you, it's creatures be with a that lot. get real big. It's going to be a lot. Real, real big. Uh, I had a, I had a really fun time playing this deck. Yeah, it looked very, very fun. If going big and building a battle cruiser sounds like your idea of a good time, yes, I'm raising my hand. Uh, I think you should seriously check out this deck because it, it was a blast to see in action. Oh, I was, yeah, I was having a great time. Very straightforward, very fun to play. Uh, and our fourth deck that was at the table was Hail Caesar. Yes. Piloted by Judge Eric. One red, white, a black for a 4-4 four, four human soldier. Whenever you attack, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, choose two. Two? One, Ooh. create two 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature tokens with haste that are tapped and attacking. Or you draw a card and you lose one life. Or Caesar Legion's Emperor deals damage equal to the number of creature tokens you control to target opponent. Um, this is a very, like, this was like a classic go wide strategy, yes. right? Yes. You're just making, like, a bunch of derps or a bunch of Garys. Yeah, Gary. <laughs> we, we saw some Garys. Um, this deck, uh, beware of Caesar, I'll just say. Like, d doing the amount of damage based on the number of creatures you control can get out of control with this card. Yeah. Um, and in a very powerful way. If you like go wide, if you like attack, if you like, I don't care if my creatures live or die. If you like attack. Yeah, this deck is for you. Do you like attack? The, the card Megan talk, was talking about was Gary clone. Yes. So apparently in the, in the game, there's this like vaults that you live in. And one of them is filled with Gary's. <laughs> Or your yeah, clones? They're, they're, they're all clones of someone named Gary. Okay. So Gary clone is one and a white for a one three with squad two as an additional cost to cast the spell. You may pay two any number of times when this creature enters the battlefield, create that many tokens that are copies of it. You make all the Gary's. You make all the Gary's. Whenever Gary clone attacks, each creature you control named Gary clone gets plus one plus zero <laughs> until end of turn. And the flavor text is just Gary. Great. Delightful. Oh, Absolutely delightful. Really good. How many Garys? Do you, I mean, so many Garys. So many Garys. So Maria, like, tell me what you felt thematically like playing these decks. How did it feel to play them? Uh, it felt great. Like I'd mentioned on the episode last time, I was like, I was uh, surprised with how much I thought that the w lore and the world of uh, Fallout seemed very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And Judge Eric knew a little bit about it, and he talked to us about it as we were playing. You but gave I, us some Mothman facts. I gave you a lot of Mothman facts, which were generated by ChatGPT, so 100% accurate. And um, factual, uh, yeah, it was it was so much fun. The decks played really really well. Like I like I mentioned, um, I messed up a bunch of triggers because the Mothman deck you got to keep track of a lot of stuff. So many triggers. I will say what it felt like to me. What I really enjoyed about playing them, which was it was that it felt very mad right it felt like i was playing a game of magic yes which with obviously which is what i want but yes but it was also like i liked the flavor and the way that the them incorporating the dis different aspects of fallout totally made a new kind of experience absolutely for me. i really liked the different kinds of counters i really liked the different kinds of decks that we were playing it just was like it was very fun. It felt to me like playing magic from a new angle or like having a new understanding of like a 
some cool lore in yeah, Magic. Yeah, it's like uh, we go to different planes in Magic with our different set releases, but for some reason it didn't feel quite like we were, d- we were diving into it as new of a world as it did with these Fallout decks. Yeah, exactly. It feels it feels very fresh. It felt very fresh to me. Yeah, and the, me um, messing up my Mothman deck only like made me want to play it again. Yeah. Uh, those rad counters, everybody, are so fun to play with because it, it, it el- introduces this element of randomness when people are like it's exciting to see if they're going to flip and deal damage to themselves or if they're going to flip a land and have to keep those rad counters on yeah and it did feel like radiation a little bit you know what i mean so like it felt flavorful and thematic (laughs) um i always have the problem uh since we are um, newer commander players with trying to balance when should i be building up my board and when should i be interacting with other people at the table i think that that is a great question of commander i what's the answer i don't know (laughs) Because I'll be sitting Period. there. I just, my deck is so cool. I want to do all the cool things that I put into my deck or that were given to me in this case. And I want to develop my board and do the awesome things. But then at the same time, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should hold off so that I can kill somebody else's very powerful thing or maybe counterspell something or whatever. And I don't know if anybody out there has any thoughts about this because it's here's, a question I'm wrestling with. Yeah, here's my Here's like my point of balance that I feel like I've been playing with sure, in sure. Commander, which is that, right, like every color has access to some kind of like board wipe or yeah. wrath style effect, which is very me to play with. Yeah. And I feel like for me, I've been kind of trying to find that moment of like, do I want to be building out my board uh, or do I want to, to be, be working towards destroying everything? Do I want to work towards destroying everything? <laughs> do I want and like when is the right moment to dis- to try and destroy everything? Or is someone else at the table going to consider destroying everything? Right? It feels like to me that balance of how much to be on the board versus how much to be trying to plan for like an uncertain future. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, it's I'm really struggling. I just really love creatures, and so like the idea of not playing one on a turn to me is like it's physically yeah. painful as I pass the turn of mana up, and it's also. <laughs> like very very uh, strongly like right oh my goodness what what am i trying to say what is my well, brain it's daylight savings what is my brain trying to say it feels to me like sometimes you do it you can go too early right like you yes. wipe the board too early or you kill something too early yeah because commander decks can be so powerful and so streamlined they just, it doesn't matter, yeah. right? You're like, okay, I saved up, like, and I'm going to do this wrath. And like, every, the board is clean. And then like the next, by the next turn, there's like 20 permanents yeah, out there again. exactly. Yeah. And you're like, wow, this was, why did I even do it? And you have to struggle with the idea of like, wh- how am I playing this game? Like I'm used to playing in competitive environment, 1v1. How do I balance that with my my instincts to attack and whatever with like making deals, politics, something I've never dealt with before yeah. in a game of magic. Like, w- what does it mean to make a deal with somebody? Will they honor it? I feel Will like they to be fair to back us, like, on it. Our games have been like more on like low politics. Yes, I agree. Which I think is kind of nice, right? It's generally doing your jam, doing your jam, and then like sometimes if two people have an agenda that aligns. <laughs> You're like, let's make a deal. Yeah. Right. I feel like we don't aggressively pursue deals unless it's like, oh, hey, we we know that we're aligned on some kind of shared goal that we're having right now. It's just tough for me. I'm still struggling, everybody. I'm struggling mm. to know whether to interact or not. I'm struggling to know how to play the politics game. Like, Interesting. do I hold back and not attack somebody because I can potentially make a deal with them or whatever? Like, I don't think oh. that I don't think that attacking someone precludes making a deal with them. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's that my open mindedness. That is very true. Right? If someone attacks me, but then the next turn, they're like, hey, we both have, there's something advantageous to to the both of us if we make this deal. I'm not going to be like, you attack. Okay, sometimes I am. (laughs) Sometimes I am going to be like, hey, you attacked me. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like you use that argument a lot. (laughs) Okay. But that's because I didn't really want to make the deal. If I really want to make the deal, if it feels feels like a good deal to me, I'm not going to be like, Oh, I'm gonna hold that I'm against gonna hold you. that against you sure. and like let it get in the way of making a good decision for myself. Right? I feel like you just have to pursue <laughs> what are good decisions for you at the moment. 
Um, I, I looked into this a little bit because we are uh, go- building some new decks for an episode coming up later that we're recording later this month Yeah, about how much uh, interaction, and by interaction I mean targeted removal of your opponent's stuff, mm. board wipes, dealing with enchantments, artifacts, etc. Am I? Are you supposed to put, quote and suppose, into your commander deck? On average. Yeah. Now, the answer I found is somewhere in the realm of 10 to 15. Oh. And Command Zone recommends something around 10. Other people are like, that's way too low. It should be something more like 15. I'm getting the idea that the more you put in, whoop, there goes my pen, the more competitive your deck is as opposed oh. to a casual. Um, because, I mean, right. I guess that kind of makes sense to me. You need to um, be able to deal with powerful stuff that people do. Yeah. But let me tell you, every time I put a piece of interaction in my deck, I'm just like, oh, that was a cool creature I couldn't put in. <laughs> do you know what? I will say that so far when we have been building decks and when I've been building de- like some decks that I know that you're going to play, yeah. they have been more linearly just about the creatures. I know. And it's so funny because Judge Rob will be like, Maria, you have to interact at this table. And I'm like, do I though? The answer is I don't. Like, here's a but- business card that says you've given me a piece of unsolicited <laughs> advice. You get 10 of these and you owe me $100. I mean, I, and and I mean, that goes into another question. I We have so many questions. Uh, about- What's your next question? The next question is the, the, the dex power level, which is traditionally referred to as a rule zero conversation. Yes. Uh, at the table, like, where are we going to be? How do we know when you say a four that I know that that means a four to me? Is your seven really a seven or is it a 10? You know what I mean? Also, numbers mean nothing. Thing. Yeah, right? Like what what it means to you is completely different perhaps than what it means to somebody else. Yeah. And I think what I'm kind of coming to the conclusion of is I think I prefer a lower powered environment as opposed to a higher power, more competitive environment. But that's just my early call right now. Yeah. Early days. I also just feel like I feel like I really like synergistic decks. Absolutely. Like, oh, but yeah. if they get too synergistic, then I think that that's considered a higher power level. I don't know. Um, and so it's like when you say higher power level, are you talking about simple card quality or are you talking about the interactions within the deck? Because I think that those are both considerations. Sure. People look at, for instance, when you played the, Ed, I made you the Edgar. Yes. Uh, the Edgar Markov deck. Right. And Edgar Markov on the face is like, this is a very powerful Very card. good commander. Exactly. But at the same time, I did specifically build that deck so that it's more linear, linearly just vampire Play, creatures. We're just playing vamps. We're just playing vampires. Yeah. And so it's a little frustrating when someone looks at that commander and they're like, oh, you must be playing like you're playing busted, super aggro. Deck. And it's like, no, you're just playing like a vampires themed commander. Sure. That at the end of the day is not is like I explicitly left out some cards that are very, very powerful so that it didn't feel um, unbalanced. Sure. And so I wonder, I, I also feel like there's so many angles when you talk about a real rule zero conversation, you can't just be like, Hey, you're putting powerful cards in your deck. Well, like, yeah, there's, there's a billion powerful cards in magic and every card can be powerful in the right situation. Yes. And so I, it's more about talking about not the power level of individual cards, but more about, Hey, my deck as a whole, is it going for a fast win or is it presenting a lot of ways that it can win um, that are hard for other people to deal with? Or does it have some powerful cards, but in a strategy that is overall more about just kind of having fun at this table? Right. Like uh, the Edgar deck, for example, could have included a bunch of really powerful ways to wipe the board, kill other people, whatever. Yes. Like Olivia's Wrath is a card that I left it, it, out exactly. explicitly, um, which does like minus, minus, minus X, minus X to all non-vampire yeah, creatures see, based like on the number that, of vampires that you have. That, and obviously super that's unfair. a one-sided wrath. Yeah. I left out New Blood, which is just a take control, is like a sorcery where you take control of another creature and it becomes a vampire under your control. Sure. Right. It's like, oh, I'm not going to do that because I understand that Edgar Markov is a powerful card, but I want you to be able to just have a lot of vampires in play. Right. And so it's like, yeah, at the end of the day, is it a powerful commander? Yes. Was it a wildly powerful deck? Like it was good. It was good. But it was also built specifically to be to be able to play at a table with people who are more interested and having fun and doing some cool stuff. Um, then a set of people who are like, let's see, we're all going to try and win this. We're all going to hit the ground running. Yeah, exactly. Try to win this game starting at turn one. 
I had the occasion to play a game of Commander Boxing League, which is a wonderful format championed by Brian David Marshall, where mm-hmm. you take a box of whatever format you want and build a commander deck from that box. I built mine from Theros Beyond Death. Oh, great. Which was an accidental choice because it was just a box I had in my house. Yeah. But it turned out to be perfect for me because it had enchantment synergies. And um, we sat down to play this. And that, to me, was so much fun because the decks on the whole are pretty bad because <laughs> <laughs> you have to put about 10 cards, 10 to 15 cards in there that are just because they're the right color. Yeah. <laughs> like put them in the deck. And for some reason that brings me so much joy to see some really terrible cards being like you being forced to play with them and find maybe a use case for something that's really bad. But it, it works in this environment where we're all playing decks that are kind of underpowered. Yeah. That to me is very fun and funny. And I and we'll play that, I hope, one day on Commander Arcade. Yeah, um, it would be very fun. But these these are all just things swirling around in my head as we start our commander journey. You know I what I mean? I think they're great questions. Um, yeah, and we'll continue to explore them as we continue making more content. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, we are now releasing two Commander Arcade episodes a month. Gasp. It's a huge gasp, everybody. It's an enormous undertaking. Enormous gasp. So, <laughs> yeah, if that's your jam, I hope you're excited because the the stuff we're making is super yeah. high quality, in, in my humble opinion. And we have some very fun games, yeah. very fun decks that we're showing off. So I hope you all like it. Go check it out, youtube.com slash at Commander, uh, at GLHF commander if you want to check that out um yeah right. and these follow decks i'm giving They're them a really good time i'm giving them a huge thumb up i kind of want to go play this like mothman deck Seriously. like i would just go i would just make this my commander deck and be like all right yeah you would love it everybody would love it yeah like let's just play this moth moths for life moths for life <laughs> have you ever had a moth problem no oh. do you want to hear you can't get out of it Maria, do you want to hear the most horrifying thing wow even more ho- horrifying than morning slime what did i say <laughs> over slime <laughs> got a high bar only today. because it, yes only, okay so i was hanging out with a friend that I, the other day that i hadn't seen in a while yeah. and they were telling me about um they had just been visiting their friend at a, at a house that they had purchased kind of in the last year yeah and their basement um, they were working on finishing their basement, but they were like, there were some snakes in their basement. Snakes? Snakes. Where, what state is this that we're talking here. about? It's here. It's Minneapolis. There were snakes down there? Just like garter snakes. That's weird a little bit. Over the course of several months. Oh no. They removed. Oh my God. 200 to 300 snakes from the no, basement. No, they did not. 200 to 300 snakes. That is a nightmare. Is that not the worst thing you've ever heard? How were there so many snakes? 200 to 300 snakes that from their basement. That number of snakes is frankly illegal. It is It is a terrifying number of snakes. It is a horrifying. That is, is an infestation. It is a frankly horrifying number of snakes. I've only seen at my old house, I saw one snake ever in the yard. 200 to 300 snakes in their How basement. How did they get in there? <laughs> What were they doing? Thriving. That's what they were thriving doing. Thriving is the answer is to what they were they doing. They were thriving. What season was this? This could oh. this could not have happened during winter. Oh. Were the snakes wintering in the basement? Yes. <laughs> the snakes. Amongst other things, the snakes were wintering in the basement. <laughs> they were snowbirding down there. Yes. 200 to 300 snakes. I am horrified. You're welcome. Did they see them down there? Like, was it a, was the floor like a writhing mass? Yes. Yuck. Oh my God. You want to see a photo? Yeah, of course I do. I mean, how can I not see a photo of that now that you've described it? I mean, it seemed to me, I'm going to say this story seems impossible. Minnesota is not a warm place. Like this is not a place where snakes have a thriving Florida like environment that they go to in the winter months. 200. 200 to 300 snakes. <laughs> I'm shook. I'm ah. <laughs> That's that Megan just showed me a pile of 10 snakes. It's like a pile of snakes is the photo. It's a pile of snakes. I don't Anyways, there you go. I don't I just cannot. I okay, so people like who live in New Orleans and stuff like their bugs are bigger down there. And so it just really puts me off like I'm visiting because I'm so scared. Like there would be a large dinosaur like bug yeah. that appears out of nowhere to say hello to me. I grew up me. with flying roaches. I don't. Nope. <laughs> just a thing. 
Well, friends, that's this episode of Good Luck High Five. We like to give you the heebie-jeebies every so often on our episodes just to keep it it's in check. It's just healthy. You know? Yeah. A good dose of fear in exactly. March. Exactly. The Ides of March are approaching. And so be careful. Yeah, we just want to warn you. <laughs> a lot of different heebie-jeebies out here. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, everybody who supports the show. Patreon.com slash GLHF Magic. Get yourself a pun at the yes. $5 level or more before next episode. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much again to Michael and to Tamsin, Yay. our two new patrons. Hey, of course. Uh, thank you to Card Kingdom. Check them out at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Card Kingdom, the internet. You can you buy can it. You can buy it. Uh, watch our new Commander Arcade episode. It's a true delight. Go watch it. Tell other people to watch it. Spread it around. We want to share the, we want to boost this channel, everybody. Uh, com- uh, YouTube.com slash at GLHF Commander. Um, we've got more fun episodes coming up for you. The late one, another one later this month. Um, mm-hmm. We hope you enjoy everyone. Uh, what a blast it's been learning the format and yeah. trying something new in magic. You know, they say an old dog can't new, learn new tricks, but this old dog just learned to juggle very poorly, but they're trying and you can't fault the dog for that. You know, that sounds like a Buzzfeed. <laughs> they don't even have thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty tough. But like if a dog can juggle, like, you know, good yeah. job, good job, dog. <laughs>